Season four of Call of Duty is right around the corner. And with this new season, we're getting a bunch of changes, a bunch of new operators, a dead operator coming back to life somehow, and a bunch of changes to Warzone that are going to introduce a couple teasers for Black Ops 6. So let's dive into everything coming into season four of Modern Warfare 3. So first off, let's talk about the new content we're getting for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone this season. The namestay operator, Soap McTavish, who died in the Modern Warfare 3 campaign, returns. However, canonically, he is dead, according to the description Call of Duty put under his season bio. Honor the legacy of Johnny Soap McTavish by letting him lead you into battle during Season 4's series of highly elite excursions. Basically, they're saying that he is dead, and this is some type of, I don't know, made-up scenario, but moving on from that. He's not the only operator we're getting this season. We're also getting the two new operators of Void and Hammer, who are both working alongside Soap to stop the detonation of chemical weapons in Urzikstan found under the Popov power facility. But interestingly, one of the operators that we already know is coming in season, Hammer, is bringing with him a very unique weapon. At the mid-season checkpoint, we're going to get a sledgehammer melee that it was quote unquote used by Hammer, the operator. But that's just one of the four weapons we're getting with this season. The other three weapons we're getting are pretty cool because two of them are fan favorite classics from previous Modern Warfare games. So first off, we're getting the Marksman Rifle, which you might know better as the Car 98K from Modern Warfare 2019. Now in Warzone, this gun was the go-to for any sniper. It was a one-shot headshot and a one-shot down at pretty close range. However, in Warzone 2, it's gonna be a one-shot headshot down and a one-shot down under 60 meters. Now 60 meters really isn't that much distance in Warzone, so just be aware that you're gonna go for headshots with the Car 98K. But on top of this, we're also getting the Superi 46, a new SMG that has great recoil control and excels at mid-range engagements. It's not great at long range. At short range, it doesn't move as well because it's kind of long and lanky, but at mid-range, it excels. And the other fan favorite weapon that we have returning this season is the Reclaimer 18 shotgun, which you might recognize as a modernized version of the Spaz-12. And the Spaz-12 is a infamous gun in many different multiplayer versions of Call of Duty. So the Spaz-12 coming back is just exciting, but I don't think it's going to be great in Warzone. I think it's going to be really great at those close quarter combat areas, especially like Shipment and those closer maps like Rust. We're also getting this season eight new aftermarket parts with the coolest one being a mod that turns the Lockman Shroud, the internally suppressed three round burst MP5 into a full auto MP5 with internal suppression, which might become the new meta for Warzone considering that it's gonna be internally suppressed and have the damage and rate of fire of an MP5. Now this might be the new go-to SMG this season. I can't confirm that information quite yet, but I'm personally very excited about the four events we have coming in the season. We have four events coming this season, and the first is an ongoing event will act as a teaser event for Black Ops 6. That's a separate section I need to talk about at the end of the video, so make sure you stick with us till the end here. We're also getting a Gundam event, which is basically giant fighting robots. So every guy's dream, to be honest here. We're also getting a new critical countdown event, which will help reveal the story of Soap's non-canon return to Warzone and what he's doing in the Warzone world after his own death. And last but not least, there is a secret event not revealed quite yet, but thanks to my ability to sleuth and find information, we do know what it is. It is a Fallout event. After the success of the recent Fallout show and considering the fact that Fallout and Call of Duty are both owned by Microsoft, it makes sense to have this crossover to happen. So we're gonna see Fallout characters in Call of Duty, and from what we can tell so far, we're gonna have T-60 power armor, much like we got for the Space Marine skin in Warhammer 40K event. This will be a T-60 power armor set for your Juggernaut suit in this new event. But the stuff I'm most excited for, other than the Black Ops secrets in Warzone, is the Warzone updates itself. So first off, Call of Duty is increasing the player count in Warzone from 100 to 120, bringing the chaos with 20% more enemies. And with Season 4 of Modern Warfare 3, we're getting quite a few changes and upgrades to Warzone. First of all, we're getting the new game mode of Buyback Solos. Now, this is a game mode that we've already seen previously in older versions of Warzone. It's pretty similar to Resurgence. However, you are your own backup. You have no other team with you, and you must have $3,000 on you to redeploy after your death. So if you don't have $3,000, you'll lose the game. And one other thing to note is that this game mode kind of encourages you to practice looting a little bit better and getting every single box you can so you have a backup of cash in your system in case you do die. However, this is unlike when you die in Battle Royale, you go to the Gulag and fight for your chance out. And while we're talking about the Gulag, we're also getting three new variants for the Gulag this season with higher concrete walls and different layouts of the actual Gulag itself. So you're gonna have to fight your way out with some new Gulag variants that don't exactly play to the way that we've all learned the Gulag so far. But these changes are nothing compared to the changes coming to 
to the bunkers in Warzone. There are some cool changes coming to the bunkers in Warzone, and we're going to have some new rooms within the bunkers that can be unlocked once you gain access to the bunker, a second layer to the bunkers. And some bunkers will have no access until after the Black Ops 6 reveal event, which I'll talk about again here in a minute. Moving on, we're also having two items from Resurgence get pulled over into Warzone's Battle Royale game modes. The first thing getting pulled over is the Specialist Perk Package, which gives you all the perks available in Battle Royale all at once. Now, this is something we've already seen a bunch in previous versions of Warzone, so it's pretty familiar to most of us. Moving on to the second item we have coming to Warzone this season, it's going to be the Foresight Killstreak. Now, this killstreak was something we saw in earlier versions of Resurgence. It basically shows you every single zone on the map as they close all the way up until the last zone of the game. Now, if you find this, definitely pop it because it gives you an advantage knowing exactly where the circle is going to close to allowing you to get positioning. However, you still have to win your gunfights, which is not exactly as much of a leg up in this game mode as most people thought it was going to be. But the other item that's coming this season is going to be broken as shit. And excuse my language, but this is going to be completely insane. What we are getting this season is a pair of boots that are called the Unlimited Tactical Sprint Boot, which allows you to activate your tactical sprint without any penalties. You will not take any stamina loss while wearing these boots, and it allows the full return of slide canceling from the OG Warzone. Now, this is broken because it's not something that everybody in the game will be able to have. You will have to find these in a game of Battle Royale or Resurgence to use them. This is going to be a huge advantage to anyone who gets them, especially the original Warzone 1 players who do, in fact, remember how to do the slide canceling tactical sprint change. This is something I think is going to completely break the game, but tell me in the comments down below. Are you excited for it? Do you not want it? Do you think it's going to break the game? I mean, I do for sure, but tell me what you think down below. The other thing we're getting for Warzone this season is kind of another crossover event. In the Warzone 2 Modern Warfare 2 year of support for Warzone, we had the EMV Hummer, which was a usable vehicle in Warzone, an all-electric Hummer that you could drive around and such. However, we're getting another version of that in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3. We're getting a Polaris off-road vehicle coming to the season, and I mean, it's pretty cool, but really there's no reason to talk about it anymore. Now, as far as the Season 4 Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer goes, we're getting some really cool stuff. First off, we're getting two new maps of Tokyo and Paris. Tokyo is set in the vibrant downtown Tokyo region with a manga shop and a hotel, whereas Paris is set in the City of Lights. However, the map itself in Paris is laid out in a figure eight pattern, forcing a ton of more gunfights as there's less areas to escape them. You're gonna probably not be prepared for this, but it's gonna be hectic and it's gonna be fun. We're getting two new game modes at launch with season four of Modern Warfare 3, and those two new game modes are, we're getting Demolition, which is a mix of objective-based game modes and search and destroy, and you have two bombs that you need to destroy. You have unlimited respawns, and you're either trying to defend the bombs or detonate both objectives. This is going to be an absurdly chaotic game mode, especially if they bring it into a 10v10 setting. It will be insanely chaotic and a lot of fun. The other game mode we're getting is Turbo Cranked. Turbo Cranked is like Cranked, however, you need to stay alive and you need to chain kills together, not just get a kill every couple seconds before your timer expires. You have to get kills in a row, in a chain. You need it'll be a lot faster paced and a lot more fun and chaotic as you can randomly blow up for not getting enough chain kills. With the Season 4 update to Modern Warfare 3, we're getting two new pieces of perks and gear. First is the Mission Control Vest, which takes one kill or 125 points off your kill streak or score streak, and additionally, every two assists you get is worth a kill, allowing you to get a kill streak faster. It's something that'll be pretty cool for those kill streak based players, but the other piece of gear we're getting is the Compression Plate. The compression plate is going to allow you to automatically regen health faster after you get a kill of any kind, whether it be tactical, lethal, gun, melee, whatever it is, you're going to start immediate health regen afterwards and it'll be faster health regen. However, for those of y'all who are those killstreak players or you want to try out the new mission control vest, you're going to be pretty happy because we're getting four new killstreaks this season. The first is the one we had leaked back at the release of Modern Warfare 3, the loitering munitions, which is basically a drone which targets a large group of enemies and launches a missile at them each time it's activated. You can activate it up to three times whenever you want. We're also getting the intelligent munition system, which is basically like a proximity mine, except it launches small seeking missiles at the enemies when activated. The missile drone is the one I'm most excited for though. It's a small piloted drone that allows you to manually target people with the missiles and guide them like the cruise missiles back in Black Ops Cold War. And the last kill streak we're getting is one that a lot of people are probably going to try to get at some point in the season. It's the DNA bomb. The DNA bomb is like a MGB, except it won't end the game. So when you activate it, it will kill the entire enemy team. However, it does not end the match like the MGB. So it's great for the late game when the scores are close and you're trying to take an objective back or just even trying to get the last couple kills off the scoreboard to win the game in Team Deathmatch. But with all the new reveals coming this season and all the new updates, we're also getting a ton of new reveals and pieces of information, Easter eggs, secrets that are all going to be hidden in Urzikstan 
which will help give us information about Black Ops 6. We have one such example is there's a locked bunker in Urzikstan, which cannot currently be opened, but will later be openable in the season after the Black Ops 6 reveal. The bunker is specifically Black Ops 6 related, as it has a piece of graffiti on the outside wall, which says, she never lets me down. A message you also found on the Mustang and Sally pistols in Warzone when you first picked them up. Now the Mustang and Sally pistols are something that were seen on the cover of Black Ops 1. But we know that Call of Duty has some type of events in the works to help kind of reveal Black Ops 6. It's gonna be an event coming later in the season or even in season five. We don't have that much information on it yet. But one thing that Call of Duty did tell us that we can do after the season four update comes out is carefully review the names of weapons and pieces of information about the weapons when you pick them up in Warzone. When you pick up these blueprints in Warzone, they're gonna contain secret messages about Black Ops 6 or have secret names relating to Black Ops 6. But if you wanna get your fix on Black Ops 6 information right now, then check out this video right here. I made this video talking about everything that we know about the Black Ops 6 campaign up to this point. And a lot of people have some very conflicting opinions down in the comments. So go check it out. And until next time, I am Icebergs, your Call of Duty informant. Stay frosty.